Proven algebra. That right here. Proven algebra. Objective. To prove statements in algebra. I love proofs. Some of the properties we have seen, we assume to be true. Others are theorems. Theorems are statements that are shown to be true by using a logically developed argument. Logical reasoning that uses given facts, definitions, properties, and other already proved theorems to show that a theorem is true is called a proof. So what we're going to do is some proofs. We're going to prove why things are true by using properties um, of numbers and also um, other theorems. Okay? That's what proof is. You're pro proving it logically. All right? Meaning you can't make any steps unless you can prove it true, okay? You're using this logical, you, 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 it's, uh, you're arguing here, right? So I want to prove to you that A plus B minus B is A just by using properties that we know about, all right? So let's see if I can do this for you, all right? Well, let's see. Let me just rearrange this. If I, this is the given problem, and I want to say that that equals the following. Now, what says that subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite? What was that? Wasn't there a definition we know? Yeah. That's the definition of subtraction is what allows me to do that. Now I'm going to say, okay, now I've kind of changed it a little bit. Now let's change the grouping here. I'm going to switch groups. I'm going to change the association here. Do you remember what, what property says that I could change the grouping and associate different ones? That was my hint. The associative property, right, of addition. Well, then there's another property. What's the property that says that a number plus its opposite is, is zero? Well, the property is of opposites, right? We kind of did a double here. We used the property of opposites, and then we substituted in. Because we knew that this is equal to zero, right? And finally, what's, what, what tells us that any number plus zero is that number? Well, that's the identity property of addition. And finally, we can say now, through transitivity, if this equals this, and this equals this, and this equals this, and this equals this, well, then that first thing equals the last thing through transitivity. And therefore, A plus B minus B is equal to A. Transitivity. Oh, well, kind of messed up. But, right. see so if we can do another one. Let's prove if A equals B, the negative A equals negative B. All right, well, I have A equals B. Now, what did I do here? I added the same thing to both sides. Did I, didn't I just add the opposite to both sides? So this is the addition property of equality, right? I'd call it the A. Now, what happened from here to here? So you've noticed the only different thing that what I did from this step to this is I just added equal things to both sides. Now, here I looked at these and I noticed that a number plus its opposite is zero. What's that? Hmm. Property of opposites. Yes. Now, what did I do again? I just added a negative A to both sides. So I can do what again? Addition property of equality. I just added a negative A to both sides, right? Now, from going this step to the next, the only thing that changed was this side stayed the same. Over here, the grouping changed around. And what's this property that says the grouping doesn't matter when everything's addition? Or the association? The associative property. That's what allows me to change the grouping. And now, oh, look at this. I substituted in zero in for this. But so what tells me that this is equal to zero Property of opposites. Prop of op. We're almost there. Now, we notice we have a negative a and zero and a negative b and zero. What's the one that tells us that some number plus zero is equal to itself? That is the identity property of addition. Ident. Adit. And finally... I put one on one side, one on the other. What did I do? Symmetry, when I flip it, right? They're not the exact one. They're the same as reflexive, but symmetry says you can kind of flip it there. I use symmetry, and now I've proven what I set out to prove. 
symmetry. Right? A equals B, then I can prove logically that negative A equals negative B. Hmm. Using all the properties of numbers. Let's do another one. We prove this one. If B is not equal to zero, then one half B A equals A. I don't know. Let's see. Let's try to do it. All right? Gotta work on it. I have my one half B equals B A. This was given to me. This was given information. And I'm going to try to go if say this equals this, and then this equals this, and this equals this. I can end with transitivity to prove it. Now what I do here, all I do is I change the grouping. The associative property lets me do that. And what's the property that tells us that a number times its reciprocal? Hmm, what's that? Give you one guess. Yep, property reciprocals. See, I turn the property reciprocals tells me a number of reciprocals equals a number of its reciprocal equals one. Prop of reciprocals. Right? And what's the one that says any number times one is itself? Uh huh. It's another identity property, but it's not identity of addition. It's identity, ident of mult. And finally, I can say at the very end. Therefore, one over b times b a equals a through transitivity. Transitivity has shown me this. All right. Let's prove another one. All right. That the opposite of Negative A minus B is equal to A plus B. All right. Well, you know, I want the opposite of this stuff, so I want this to switch the signs. But we're going to use the properties here to do it, all right? So I'm going to start out with, oh, this is my given information. And what tells me that, what I, that I can change this negative? Well, I look what changed here. I just changed the brackets, um, but they're still grouped the same. What I really changed is, oh, look at this. I changed subtraction to plus a negative. And what is that? Well, that's the definition of subtraction tells us that. Right? And what is this property that says um, if you take the opposite of a sum, it's the same as the sum of the opposites? Do you know what property that is? It's a property of the opposite of a sum. It says the opposite of the sum is the same as the sum of the opposites. So it says the opposite of A plus B. Oh, I shouldn't do it there. The opposite of A plus B equals the opposite of A plus the opposite of B. All right? Pro opposites. Pro well, sorry, whatever. Property of opposites of a sum. And finally, what did I do? What tells you that the opposite of a number is itself? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right. It's the opposite. Definition of the opposite, right? It's opposite. Right? So the opposite of negative A is A. The opposite of negative B is B. Right? Here we go. Pretty straightforward. Therefore, through transitivity, I can say that negative negative A minus B equals A plus B. Well, anyway, these are different things, but how can it help us? Well, sometimes you want to solve this. I want to say prove if 6X minus 4 equals 3X minus 22. Now you guys are like, oh, this is the meat and potatoes. You're all excited. I know you are. You're like, whoop de doo how can I do this using just, I mean, I know that you can probably walk through it. Let's just think, explicitly state the properties that we're using here. So let's see. This is our given equation, right? How did I go from this to this? Let's see. What changed here? Um, 22. This guy's missing. This guy changed to a 3x. What, I must have, how do I go? I must have subtracted 3x to go from 6x to 3x. Yes, I did. I subtracted 3x from both sides. I used the subtraction property of equality. I subtracted 3x from both sides. Sweet. Now, from this step to this step, this negative 22 went down to a negative 18. This, so, I mean, I'm sorry, went up to a negative 18, so it went up 4. And this 4 disappeared, which means I must have added 4. The added plus the 4 must have been added to both sides, so this is the addition property of equality. Must have added 4 to both sides, right? I'm looking here, this 18 turned to a 6, this is one-third of that, oh, and this is one-third of that, must have been divided by 3. The division property of equality are divided by 3, right? And finally, yeah, we've just shown, we've proved that if this is true, then we can logically, using properties, show that this is also true.